Hey everybody there, this is uh, Randy Brown from for uh, NLP Ultra. Um, there's a term that I'd like to go over and then I am going to start uh, helping you memorize the cranial nerves backwards and forwards, okay? But there's an NLP concept that I want to get out of the way first. And that NLP concept is known as 7 plus or minus 2. Now what that means is that people usually can only hold about seven bits of information in their head. You know, so like if you have like a number, people usually can only remember like a seven digit number. So uh, typically, unless they commit it to memory and, you know, actually, you know, take some time to process it. But, you know, and the plus or minus two means, you know, some people can hold nine bits of information at one time and some people can only hold five bits of information at one time. So that's what it means, 7 plus or minus 2. It's an NLP concept, okay? Now, here's the med school stuff. And then I'm, I'm going to be doing a series of educational videos on how to remember all this. But uh, if you haven't watched my video, check the very first one out. This is the one about linking and the memory palace. Now, uh, I'll go over the memory palace really quick right now, just as a refresher. A memory palace is any place you know well, okay? And uh, say it's your house, for example. And in my house, uh, I it, we start at the door, and then you can go clockwise through your house or counterclockwise through your house, and you just pick out large objects, and you link the word of what you're thinking to the object in a funny way. And you can... What you can do is, like, when you're not at your house, you can mentally walk through your house. And if you're going clockwise, you go clockwise through your house. And then, okay, so there's a TV. TV reminds me of this. There's my refrigerator is next up after that. That reminds me of this. And my oven is next up after that. That, that reminds me of this. So this is, that's basically the gist of a memory palace and how to use it. Now, uh... I'm going to assume that you have your own memory palace, a place that you know very well that you can mentally walk through in your mind with several large objects that can uh, be linked to the words that you're going to learn. Now, we're going to be learning some very, uh, some very interesting words, words like trochlear, uh, vestibule, vestibule cochlear, uh, trigeminal, um, ocular motor, and you're, you're probably thinking, well, Randy, how in the hell am I going to remember that? Well, I'll show you. And uh, to remember terms like that, you're going to need to know uh, what's known as the substitute word system. Now, what a substitute word is, is that you take a word, and uh, for instance, the first tough word that we're going to be working on is ocular motor. Okay? Now, uh, you could think of a different word that could remind you of that word. Because if you're in med school, you probably heard these words tons of times. You just need a little device to, to remember it. So for ocular motor, you would think, uh, you would just think of a word that rhymes or sounds alike. So I could think Dr. Ock and motor. Dr. Ock is working on a motor. So, and that would remind me, that would give me the visual cue, oh, ocular motor is the third cranial nerve. And then, uh, then we've got a thing like uh, vestibule cochlear, but we'll, I'll get into that later. I'll, we'll go through them one by one. So I'll teach you how I memorize it, and you can use your own memory palace, and you can associate something weird or bizarre, and it has to be weird or bizarre, or you're not gonna remember it. It can't be something normal, because people don't remember normal things. Like, I mean, when you're driving down the street, I mean, I bet you couldn't tell me how many red lights you passed unless you passed only one, you know? So I'm going to go through this. I'll, I'll show you how I do it, and then hopefully it will be a jump-off point to how you can do it. You don't have to use the substitute words that I use. If you think of a better one, use that one for yourself and uh, learn it that way, okay? So uh, the first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve. Now, olfactory, if you know what that is, it's olfactory is your sense of smell. So, and I'm going to use my memory palace from 1963 Pasadena Street in Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, 
olfactory has to do with nose. So I picture a large nose for the doorknob. And the door is the first item in my memory palace. So I open the door with the nose, so that tips me off to olfactory. Uh, the next thing in my memory palace is a mirror. And uh, the next nerve is the optic nerve. And optic has to do with your eyes. So I picture a giant eye looking out at me from that mirror. Okay, and now we're going to get into the tough stuff here. Okay, the next one is called the ocular motor. And just remember, Dr. Ock is making, um, he's like fixing a motor in my bathtub because the bathtub is the next item in my memory palace. So Dr. Ock fixing a motor in the bathtub, bathtub ocular motor, all right? The next one, the next item in my memory palace is the toilet. And, uh, and the next word is truck layer. And uh, if you have some trouble with this, just use a substitute word. What does truck clear sound like? Truck clear. Like you're clearing a truck to move out of my toilet. So that's the truck layer, okay? The fourth uh, nerve is the trigeminal. Okay, now, and the next uh, item in my memory palace is my sink. So I'm trying to force a gen in with my friend Al. Try gen and Al. You know, so I'm trying to jam a gen in the sink, all right? The fifth nerve, is the abducin and the uh the next item in my memory palace is my mom's tv so i picture somebody working out their abs with a spade on their abs which is also known as a deuce so that reminds me of abducin okay then the uh the fifth nerve is pretty easy to remember and uh the uh the, my memory palace for that is my mom's sink and the fifth nerve is, no wait, hold on, olfactory, optic, uh, ocular motor, trochlear, uh, abducens. The sixth nerve is the facial nerve. And you just, for this one, I just picture my mom getting a facial in her sink. Like maybe she's got those like little cucumbers and she's washing her face in the sink. Okay, the seventh one, this one's a tricky one. It's the auditory nerve, and uh, the auditory nerve is, you know, your ears, basically. But we're going to try to remember it by its technical name, the vestibular cochlear nerve. Now, what a vestibule is, a vestibule, a vestibule is an area between the front door and the main building. So I... And the next uh, item in my memory palace is my mom's toilet. So I picture a vestibule on the toilet and a, a giant uh, rooster riding on a Learjet going through the vestibule of the toilet. All right? And then next up, we have the glossopharyngeal. Okay? Now, uh, what I think of is I think of gloss, hair, and gel. So I just picture a woman, you know, putting on lip gloss and gelling her hair in the shower. And the shower is the next thing in my memory palace. And then uh, after that, we had the vagus. And uh, like uh, the next item in my memory palace is my mom's light. So I just picture a big vagina as a lampshade. And like I said, they can be ridiculous. And the more ridiculous they are, the better chance you have to memorize it. All right. Then after that is my mom's bed, and uh, the next word is cranial accessory. So I just picture a skull wearing earrings, because earrings are an accessory, and a uh, skull is a cranium, so cranial accessory. All right. And then the last one is hypoglossal, and I associate my mom's uh, closet to hypoglossal. Okay. And uh, how do you remember hypoglossal? Well, I'm a Star Trek nut, so whenever I think of hypo, I think of hypo spray, and glosso, I think of a glossary. So I imagine bones in uh, bones from Star Trek uh, just uh, spraying his hypo spray at a glossary, 
hypoglossal. Okay? Now let me see if I can go backwards and get everything that you know I've got. So last one is hypoglossal, uh, and then cranial accessory. Then there's the vagus, the glossopharyngeal, the vestibular cochlear, the facial, the abducens, the uh, the trigeminal, the trochlear, the ocular motor, the uh, the optic nerve, and the olfactory nerve. So I just named them backwards because I had them linked in my mind to the objects. And uh, if you've done this, if you've done this correctly, you should also be able to remember this. Remember, all you got to do is think up a substitute word or a word that triggers your memory for that word, and you can remember them all. So let's go through them again. So there's 12, so I'm going to start with two on this hand. So we got the, uh, we got the olfactory, the optic, the, uh, the ocular motor, the trochlear, the trigeminal, the uh, abducens, the facial, the uh, vestibular cochlear, the glossopharyngeal, the uh, vagus, the cranial accessory, and the hypoglossal. So I just, I just did all of them right there. So if you use these techniques, they will help you. But you've got to use the techniques. It'll take a little bit of work. And, you know, like my links may not work for you. My substitute words may not work for you. But you can find words of your own. It's not that hard. Hypoglossal could be tons of things. Like you could picture hyperglossal. You know, like, like picture a kid who's really hyper flipping through the glossary. Or for vestibular cochlear, you could put like a vest with a tip of, a, you know, whatever on it going through a Learjet. Yeah, I mean, you can come up with your own substitute words, and it's actually better if you come up with your own substitute words, because that way you'll remember it a lot easier. So those were the trail of cranial nerves, and uh, there you go.